In a world that can be challenging, and at times unpredictable, it's hard to find moments to focus on what you need. Join Stephanie James on The Spark as she guides you to use your inner flame to ignite your best life. As a best-selling author, psychotherapist, transformational life coach, and international show host, Stephanie is dedicated to helping you create a life that takes you, your goals, and your passions to the next level, so you can live a life that is fully lit up and fully alive. She believes that your life is meant to be a beautiful expression of the things that light you up. That by living your dreams, you give permission to others to do the same. Are you ready to feel alive and inspired to fuel your dreams and put a fire behind your desires? Let's ignite a spark in one another that will illuminate the world. The Spark with your host, Stephanie James, starts now. Welcome to The Spark. I'm your host, Stephanie James. I am here tonight with Jen Ward, who is a dynamic healer at a global level, an international executive coach. She is one of these teachers who can teach spirituality and its essence and all these things at a, at a way that we can really understand it and integrate it and assimilate it into who we are. So excited to have this conversation and to have all of you here listening as well. Thank you for joining us. And thank you so much, Jen Ward, for being here on The Spark. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you. You as well. So, Jen, before we talk about your new book, which is really exciting for me, too, and I can't wait to learn more about it, which is this S, it's SFT Lexion. Lexicon. Lex, lexicon, excuse me. That's okay. SFT Lexicon. I don't have my glasses on. It's okay. <laughs> so... I, I, I want to know a little bit about your history. You're, you're this amazing healer, and I'm, I'm really curious about your journey. Mm -hmm. like, 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 is this something that you always knew as a child? Or tell me, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got to where you're at. Well, no, actually, um, I was always a sensitive child. I, I, like, would cry all the time when I was, like, just four, I would try to figure out why there was suffering in the world. And I could actually, I was feeling other people's pain and I didn't realize it then. But my upbringing was really dysfunctional. My um, mother was terrified of giving birth. She hit, my parents were alcoholics, really poor. And, um, and I was the youngest of 10 in a Catholic home and stuff. So it was like a sin if you didn't have me and stuff. But she, um, she so wanted to abort me. So she so tried to like pickle me out by drinking during my, my gestation period or trying to figure out how to like fall downstairs or whatever, just to get rid of me and stuff. So it's really beautiful because all of that resistance comes into what I do now is, is I feel the resistance of, um, <laughs> I feel the resistance and it's just like, it's just like second nature to me. So it made me strong enough to do what I do. And I've had a really abusive upbringing, which is fantastic for what I do, because anything in the human condition that one could experience, I have, I have consciously experienced in this lifetime as um, field work for the energy work. But I didn't know at the time I was doing field work. I just, and the adepts, the spirit guides who work with me were keeping me alive. <laughs> because there were some close calls, but they were also um, teaching me. And so everything was a lesson. And so all of that stuff, everything that I've been through goes into the work that I do to um, help others now. It's really amazing. Well, and, you know, that's that's been my experience, too, and my experience mm -hmm. as a psychotherapist, you know, um, over the last 32 years working with people really intimately and knowing that oftentimes it really is some of those darkest, deepest challenges and difficulties we go through 
It is like that becomes like the soil that something beautiful can grow from. Yeah. And it's formula. Yeah. Well, and you know, if you're comfortable sharing it, you had mentioned something before we got onto the interview about being locked in some place. Oh, a basement. Yeah. <laughs> um, so after I like went to massage therapy school and I, I kind of started to like discover that I, I could move energy with my intentions and I could like pick up modalities like really easily. And, and, and people were people like I prevented someone, my brother from having a really major stroke. He just, and then um, people long distance diverticulosis, they could stop the bleeding and stuff just with my work and stuff. So I knew that I had that, but I wasn't really sure about it back then. And then I helped this guy from this um, spiritual group, spiritual group that we were in together and he ended up wanting to take care of me. So I moved with him and then eventually it became into a hostage um, situation. I, I got Stockholm syndrome. He actually kept me in the basement and was working to starve me to death and um, work me on this property. And um, yeah, and so he thought he was being guided by the Illuminati, which he thought were the neighbors. And he was into all these conspiracy theories and all these galactic things, which, which became part of my psyche because I was so empathic. So um, I actually went through the process of enlightenment there. And it's and I, it took me years to realize what had happened and stuff. But um, it, it really is a formula kind of thing where it's like three days, um, terrified. You go totally into the most horrific things and then pass through. And then the ego is just disconnects. And it's almost like you think you're going to lose your mind kind of feels like that but then there's such an incredible peace afterwards for like three days and then the ego comes back in and then you get terrified that that it's evil but it's not it's just the ego and how it feels coming back in so that's a real experience for people it's not about like buying a mattress like we're told on the commercials you know how enlightenment they say is like what is enlightenment it's buying a mattress <laughs> i've never heard that Okay, it's, it drives me nuts when I see one of those commercials and it's like a sleep mattress. No, no, it's not about the perfect mattress. <laughs> yeah, wow. So, gosh, thank you for sharing that. What a what a horrifying and um, also it looks like amazing gifts coming out of that, you know, terrible situation. How did you finally get out? Um. The adepts, the spirit guides who were um, helping me, they were at the end. So I was sensory deprived and um, my brain, I lived on a, a small bowl of quinoa a day, like a half of a bowl. And I had to work outside all the time. And he um, stopped cooking it for me. So it was bitter because you can't, there's an enzyme in it. You can't eat it raw. Mm -hmm. So I was getting really sick and I was having bed spins. So I couldn't. I couldn't get up and, and work and do the whole torture routine in the morning that he liked to do on. So I just was, I said, I couldn't go for the walk in the morning. And um, so he locked me out of the house and I had the wherewithal because of the adults to put my identification in my pants and keep on my sneakers instead of my work boots. So then I walked, I walked to the nearest, which was four, four miles in, um, in um, the country roads and stuff and terrified that I was gonna be, um, you know, whatever. Um, he, he told me all these lies and stuff. I was gonna be raped. I was gonna be this and that and this and the Illuminati were gonna get me and everything. So I got to the airport. Um, no, I got to the supermarket and then I, all I had was a starter check and my starter check didn't work. So I was stranded there. So I had to like call a friend back in my hometown, the only one I hadn't disconnected with. And she goes, you, you go right back there and you tell him to treat you better. And so I just said, you don't understand. If you don't help me now, I am going to die. And then she Western Union me money and I got on a plane and it was like, like nothing ever happened. But I came back thinking I was a retarded boy because of all the 
brainwash and then abuse, but. Wow. So, so did you go through your own therapy? Did you get, go through a healing process or how did that happen? How did you let go of that? Mm, I tried to go to therapy and then every time I went, the, the, I actually saw the therapist literally fall off his chair when I told him and he, he was like, he was just flustered. He couldn't handle the energy of it. And every time I went for therapy, when I came back, it would be erased from the computer. So after three times, I realized, no, I'm not going to get help here. This, this isn't, you know, this is, uh... so basically, I basically helped someone in my family who, who was really strong in business. And he started crying. He, he was very aloof and he, you know, thought he was really cool and everything and didn't really connect with me before that. But I helped him and I made him cry. And he goes, why are you helping me? And I was able to help him. So he got his, his um, friends to make me a website, taught me how to tweet. And within a week, I had connected with um, Mariel Hemingway. I helped her find her lost dog, Bindu. And so she told everyone about me. So I had like this little Twitter following then. And I just been, um, so the therapy has been helping other people. It, it really is to me, the only therapy is, is the outflow because, mm. you know, so you can do, you can use any level of outflow. You can journal, you can talk to trees or you can heal all of humanity. It depends on the level of pain. And there was a lot of pain. And the adepts have told me, if you can heal one, you can heal 7 billion. So it's just like blossom from there. I never, I never expected to have a presence in this world. I just wanted to sit by the TV, eat Cheetos and like, you know, that yeah. was it. But, but you had a <laughs> higher calling, obviously. Well, the adepts have uh, kept me in a need to know basis. So I just really am good at listening to what they want me to do like the books that I've written and um doing private sessions I it never would have occurred to me and stuff but they just tell me what to do and I pay attention wow what an incredible incredible story Jen again I mean my, my heart is just I I feel like my throat's tight you know I can feel some of that energy too and oh sorry no no it's I mean it's it's because it is, I mean, my heart just feels for you. And what a beautiful gift that you've given to so many other people in return. Yeah, but that's why I don't like to talk about those. I don't want to do that to people because everybody has their story. But it's like the depth of your story. People have to realize that. That's that's wonderful. Your journey is, is, is yours. And that's what you turn into lemonade. And then that's how you help other people is based on the level of pain that you've become aware of and everything. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, really it is. And I'm so inspired, honestly, I want you to hear, you know, it's, it's like, because it's like, this is, this is like, kind of like the call out to humanity, you know, all of the people and all of us that have been going through these hard times, it's like, we're able to transcend them. We can transcend them and Absolutely. then be in this different energy where we're really contributing to the well-being of all and you have done that in such a beautiful big way um who who do you feel like i mean you, you're also i know a coach um an executive coach what what is your typical clientele who do you work with well it's interesting um actually you could go to my youtube page and see actual sessions because these wonderful souls have this, the most vulnerable thing in their life, this work, they've allowed me to put their sessions up on my YouTube page, Genuine Healing. And um, usually it's, it's, it's the people you've been talking about, those who are really advanced and want to help humanity. And they want to um, connect with me to like use their gifts and their pain and transform it to uplift all of consciousness and like to, it's because they're a surrogate for the collective and so so you see that in these sessions that people have so it's it's amazing oh so exciting i'm going to check that out i didn't get a chance to check out your new youtube channel but i just <laughs> want to invite our audience to check it out i know i'm going to check it out 
so it's, powerful. It's a, it's really intense. But then me and um, my fiance Marvin have an, a little lighthearted um, podcast called Jen and her Jammies. And so, you know, so many people seem to be intimidated by me and I don't know why, you know, I'm just like me. And so I dress up in pajamas and I have my plushies, my inanimate friends and stuff. And Marvin's really polished in his business suit and he's asking me questions. So, so it's like everyone would want to hear what he says usually. And so on a, on the first, on the first podcast after the um, pilot, he goes, so Jen, what do you think? And I thought, wow, just this question where this polished businessman is asking this off the wall, you know, free thinker what she thinks, even that is shifting consciousness. It's very subtle, but it's very profound and um, it's fun. And poor Marvin doesn't know what to do with me because he never knows what he wants to structure everything because he's really good at structure and he can't. And we go, we'll do a... um, He'll, we'll do a rehearsal. He goes, okay, what do you say if I say this? And I go, okay, I say this. He goes, right. Now I'm going to ask you this. What do you say? I go, I say this. And he goes, perfect. And then he starts to like go and I go totally off script. And he's like, (laughs) his face is like, he can't can't compute what to do. He's just giving up. It's really cute. (laughs) Well, the podcast sounds really fun as well. Mm -hmm. So just really great offerings. You know, Jen, so you've had these amazing clients, you've been doing, you know, this, this really big work, you know, for you, what, what's been the gift back to you? I think the biggest gift is meeting my soulmate. They just happened in the last year. So I thought, I thought this whole life, like, cause I've just been given service and just doing whatever I, I can do. And on the other side of the world in Australia, this man has been doing the same thing only for business. So what I do for for individuals, he does for businesses. And it's just so profound to like, I thought I was a monk. I thought I was here to like, you know, just serve and just, you know, just, just this was it. So to find out that I have something human to strive for is like, and, and seeing so many people be, be helped by the SFT lexicon, all these kinds of facilitators. Now people want to become SFT facilitators because that's the intention is to make this worldwide like yoga was funny, you know, alternative at one point, but now it's widely accepted. So the SFT tapping and the lexicon is a way to teach all individuals, for one thing, how to not give their power away to someone else. To, to keep their empowerment and to use the tapping to see their own omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence. So it's really profound because that's where the collective has to get for mass awakening. Everyone has to stop deferring to other people and all these power structures need to like um, go back to the individuals and the individuals need to know, know and realize their worth, so. Absolutely. And I'm so excited to dig into this with you when we come back from break. And before we do, um, you and I, before the interview as well, we were talking about this is tapping. And the only tapping that I had known before is EFT, emotional freedom technique, which is this tapping on the body's meridians for those people that don't know what EFT is. Um, and it's it's really this beautifully proven way of where I've used it in sessions where someone's literally having a panic attack or they might have a phobia like claustrophobia. Um, I've had people that had arachnophobia and fear of needles and as adults are throwing up or passing out. And it really within a session, we could literally go and test out, we call in vivo, which is live. Um, mm-hmm if these things worked. And so I'd have someone come in that was claustrophobic. We do a couple rounds of the EFT tapping and then we'd go across the street. There's a hotel across the street from my office Mm -hmm. and we'd get in the elevator. And it was so awesome because this person who could just think about a closed space and freak Mm -hmm. out Mm -hmm. could walk across the street after that and we'd get in the elevator and go up and down a few times. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. It's so powerful. And it really does rewire the brain. So before we break, what is SFT? It's um, 
So EFT is emotional freedom technique. SFT is spiritual freedom technique. So the emotional level is the astral plane. We get the physical, it helps with, and the emotional level. But the SFT works with the physical and emotional, but it also works on the causal, which is the past life and the Akashic records, which is what I read, and then the mental body as well. So it's like releasing all those things so that you can transcend the the realms of duality and be in the pure positive realms in the awakened state. So um, what's really interesting about your person in the um, elevator, you got to wonder why they were afraid of the elevator. So I would go in their past lives and see where they had suffocated in a sarcophagus or were like um, trapped in a cave somewhere. And so make up taps around that actual incident. So go way back into that lifetime. And if people don't believe in past lifetimes, they can believe that they can carry their forefathers trauma in their DNA. So they, they don't have to believe in past lives. But I do see the images of the actual traumas. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I can absolutely I, I know that we have genetic predispositions mm-hmm. to de- anxiety and depression and these kind of things so that we know there is something carried through DNA. Absolutely. And, you know, and so whether we want to say past lives or not, I think it, it's really awesome that, you know, you're able to have a window into people's souls and, Absolutely. and to really help guide people in a beautiful way. So more from Jen Ward, when we come back and we are going to be talking about her book, SFT, mm-hmm. uh, the lexicon lexicon i keep saying that wrong everyone (laughs) give me the lexicon and i can't wait to learn more so everyone come back and join us thank you so much jen thank you thank you listeners welcome to the spark i'm your host stephanie james I'm here with a global healer, um, amazing author, and just a delightful woman. So happy to have Jen Ward with us on The Spark tonight. Welcome, Jen. Welcome, Stephanie. Thanks for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Hey, look who came in the mail for me. Look at that. Oh, well, thank you for holding up your book. This (laughs) This is Jen's new book. Yeah. The SFT lexicon. So Jen, tell us about your book. So it's, um, it's a self-help book. It's like a textbook for life. What it does is like anyone who reads this book can take the taps that we do, the SFT protocol, spiritual freedom technique, and they can use it for themselves or their loved ones to, to release the stagnant energy that's preventing them from moving on and, whatever way that they need to move on. It's really kind of exciting. It is. Well, and for people that aren't familiar with SFT, um, Mm -hmm. EFT, which I've done in my private practice is emotional freedom technique. And it's when you're tapping on the body's meridians. And Mm -hmm. so people really get a lot of relief, whether they have phobias or, you know, uh, fears, anxieties, How does SFT, the spiritual freedom technique, differ from that? Well, well, because um, EFT is like emotional freedom. And and so it comes from the emotional body and and it helps the emotions and the physical body. But the beauty of this is that I am medical intuitive. I can tap into what's physically going on with the body and then also tap into the person's Akashic records to see what the core issue is and correlate them and um, create taps. And, and we do the taps and every tap ends with in all moments. So when you're doing a tapping, it's three on the head, one's on the chest and one's on the abdomen. It's a lot simpler because I'm actually assisting from wherever I am with anyone who's doing the taps. And when they do those taps, they're, they're dissipating what's going on in their body, in the physical, what happened in the ancestral tape many, you know, in their DNA or many lifetimes ago, whatever they believe, and um, just collapsing it. So the issue is just dissolves. So, so the SFT lexicon and a lot of my books are the tabs I've done in private sessions. So it's actual research. 
And a lot of these issues are, are um, formula, a lot of them. Um, you want an example? Yeah, it'd be great. Okay, so a lot of women have uh, a thyroid, a low thyroid gland. And when I tapped into a woman who was dealing with that, the engram from a past lifetime or the excess, what do you call them, the ancestral imprint was running for her life. So at the same time, she's the, the poor thing was trying to like deal with all that's going on in this lifetime and her energy on some other level is running for its life. And that's what was exhausted in the thyroid. So what we do is we um, dissipate, we disconnect those two from, from being relevant in the physical and we um, collapse and dissolve that engram, which is the past life memories I'm seeing. So it's not going to affect her anymore. The, the, the pain that people feel in the physical is like a stored trauma that it wants to come out and be validated. So the tapping is a way to validate it and say, I hear you. It's like putting a boo-boo, kissing a boo-boo. And then once you kiss the baby's boo-boo, then, then the, um, the temper tantrum, the crying stops. And that's what pain is to the human body. Yes. Yeah. Well, and so... Jen, this is so fascinating. How did you get into this? Well, I didn't, I, I don't think I got into it. I, I just think I was like really troubled. I've had a, you know, rough lifetime and stuff. And then when I was probably at the, the worst of my life, this, um, I reached out to this, this gentleman, he did something called body talk and they used the tapping. And um, the tapping was originated from the Aborigines who, who um, they went out exploring with this Aboriginal tribe and they saw whenever they injured themselves, they would do the tapping and stuff and, and leave it. So they created a whole protocol around the tapping. So, so I would go to these um, healers and every single one of these dynamic healers would say, my spirit guide told me that whatever I could do for you to do it because you know what you do is important. So, so I went to this body talk guy and he would do in the noises that I make and the tapping. And then it got to a point where I was perceiving more than he could. And he was like, I was reaching a glass ceiling and what he could help me with. And a lot of my friends were going to him and I kind of like figured out energetically what they needed that he wasn't able to tap into. So, and it just, it just snowballed from there. Wow. How long have you been doing this now? Um, about um, this, like this, it's about 14 years. So there's wow. a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of examples. And people are coming to me now with even more extreme issues like traumatic brain injuries, concussions, strokes, and they're getting their, um, they're getting um, use back of their faculties it's really exciting that is so exciting mm -hmm. how, how do you feel like Jen the tapping has helped you in particular in your life um well the thing is is that I other than helping other people I really don't have a reason for being here because there's there's no I have no I'm disconnected socially and family wise and and basically my whole purpose to be here is to help others. And when I came back, you know, I was locked up, starved and tortured by a sociopath for a year. That I was a um, retarded boy when I came back. And my only therapy was to start to help people first on Twitter, then Facebook and private sessions. And it's just, it's just my way of validating all of the horrific things that I've endured is by, um, justifying it with helping others. Well, if, if I needed to suffer that so I could help all these other people and understand what they need, then, then it doesn't create a insanity or an imbalance because you know how much a person gives by the amount of, amount they give is probably um, equal to the amount that they've endured. So the more a person gives, the more you know that they've been through stuff. Well, I know that you'd shared your story with me a little bit personally, mm -hmm. um, outside of the interview, mm -hmm. um, for those people that don't know you, um, you know, when you, when you say you were locked up for a year, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I, I want to make sure people understand the, the depth of that, 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 you know, <laughs> truly you were like captured or, you know, and, um, was it a cult that you were in or what, what was, well, I was in the spiritual group with this guy and he was on the other side of the country and I, I did some healing with him. I could see when I met him that his, his energy field was really distorted but he was so good looking that I didn't care, you know, and I was so love starved from my past that um, there was a need to like be loved and by a man or whatever. And we were just friends and everything, but I would do anything to help him. And then um, he, he would send me a phone and all these gifts to like keep me connected to him. And he, he sent me the phone so I could stay on the phone with him. And when he went to when, when he went to work, I was connected with him and doing releases and making him feel better and, and safe. And then he became dependent on me and he wanted me, he wanted to take care of me. So he said, because he knew I had a rough life. So we ended up moving to his new job in a, in a neutral state and we didn't know anybody and everything. And he had property that we rented property and stuff. But then he got really creepy and he said that I was stealing his energy and so he turned on me and you know I had cut all ties with my family and social ties just to be there and stuff because he got more and more paranoid so I was trapped basically with him with with no no way out and stuff and it became worse and worse he started like withholding my food and put me in the basement and I, I ended up like eating the garbage to try to survive and eating the dog food, it tasted so good at the time. Oh, my gosh. It tasted like biscuits. But then he caught me and he says, if you ever steal what's mine again, I'll punch you in the stomach until you throw up. So I stopped stealing the garbage. And then um, I found to survive. This is a beautiful story. I thought, like, God had forsaken me. And there was this little passage that I had known from the spiritual group. It was like the blessings of God are all around and they're as plentiful as grass. So when um, when I was almost hopeless, I was going to die. He had this mass grave that he made me stand in. And he goes, this is going to be where you stay for eternity. So get used to it. So at night, he, he used to make me lay in that grave and, and get used to it. So I, I was giving up hope. I was like too skinny and... But then one day we were walking in our natural ritual of walking the property and torturing me. And then I looked down and there was scallions, wild scallions. I had one the day before and it was so sweet. And I looked down, the whole hill was covered with these wild scallions. So I knew that God had sent the, the grass for me to actually literally eat to keep me alive. So then he had told me that God hated me and God thought I was rotten and all this stuff and so when I saw that grass the scallions the food I knew that he was lying because God had sent it to me and so so it changed my my it, it snapped me out of complying with him wow oh my gosh how did you ever escape from there well it wasn't really a matter of it wasn't the same way because like because of my upbringing I didn't have any self-esteem so I basically didn't challenge authority figures and stuff. I basically get, went along with him. And he wasn't trying to just kill my body. He was trying to destroy my soul. And, um, and he, wanted, he was trying to get me to help. And I was going along with him trying to help with that until I realized that uh, the adepts, the spirit guides were working with me inwardly and, and um, helping me get strong enough on the full moon after the full moon it was the first of april and i couldn't get up i couldn't get up to um get out and do the ritual and i was having bed spins from being so so you know deprived and he um locked me out of the house and he said you know he wouldn't talk to me and stuff so i just said i'm leaving now i tried to leave before but i didn't because the dog would follow me my dog I didn't know how to deal with a dog in a different state and everything. And I didn't want to like, but this time the dog knew. The dog knew that I needed to leave without it. So the dog let me walk away and didn't follow me. And so that's why I actually was able to leave because I didn't want to 
you know, sacrifice my dog before that. Yeah. Wow. That's more than I usually, uh, um, that's more than I usually share with people. So, well, thank you for sharing that. I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's so horrific, you know, at, at the reality of what you had to deal with. And yet, instead of becoming someone who, you know, is so traumatized, they can't function, you became someone who started helping as many people as possible. Well, I think that's a miracle in all this is because um, I, I think uh, my mother had sociopathic tendencies as well and, and all that. And uh, I, I think it's like a really a miracle because I was never shown love. I didn't know what love was. But to be able to love and show compassion to others. And I, I always check in, wait a minute, I cry at these things. I cry at commercials and the dog. So it's like, no, I do have compassion. So I'm not like them. And so it's a miracle to me that I am able to love instead of be like them. So well, that's and, and a real gift. It is a gift. And I know from our conversations that you have a wonderful love in your life, a healthy, loving relationship with your fiance. Well, he's amazing. He's the one who took the first edition of the books and he's edited them all. So it's like this book will stand the test of time where the first edition may not. So he's edited it and compiled it and he made me write. It's got a lot more of my experiences in it than the first edition. So, Well, it's just a beautiful colored book, uh, covered book. I really, really mm -hmm. love it. Thank so you. tell us about the work that you're doing now in the world, Jen. What is, what is it look like now for you and moving forward? Well, it's, um, well, I'm, I'm working towards moving to Wadonga where Marvin and I have our own um, home there. And we're gonna, our intention is to create the spiritual city and um, <clears throat> be anchored in the earth and, and empower all of humanity. He's working to empower business. He does what I do for individuals. He does it for businesses and he's a, he's a genius. So I look forward to, to, um, supporting that and working with that and doing um doing ceos can you imagine the ceos getting this work where you can see all their blockages and release them and get them over them so they can like be more in touch with humanity and their own empowerment instead of like being driven in power or greed because that's not who they are as human beings mm -hmm. so it's really exciting to do that and also I'm still doing the private sessions while I can. We're editing all, all my 19 books to, and um, upgrading the next one is the poetry book. Marvin's actually having me write an erotica um, chapter because we're working to get women over that shame. You know, the shame of sexuality and the sh shame of their bodies seems to be universal and it's not necessary. It, it disconnects them from their employment. So our whole purpose is to um, balance out the male energy with the female energy and to create that synergy of respect for each other so, and to, um, to help humanity awaken. We're doing these um, free, free tapping sessions you know, once a month where a world healing where anyone can go to my website and sign up for zero dollars and put their name in and then we have those and we have these workshops the next one is on um healing your twin flame and your soulmate wherever they are because women and men maybe they they have need and want for that love and the need and the want drives it away if you have need and want that's a different latitude and longitude than have so what you have to do is like take the most altruistic intention and help them wherever they are. And in that altruism, you can draw them actually to you because that's a basis, as you know, of true love is that, that empowering the other individual. So. Well, I really resonate with uh, bringing the male and female energies into balance. And I know that that's one of my, you know, uh, visions too, going forward, helping people 
to really, we, we have to, instead of the me movement, uh, the me too movement, which was absolutely imperative and important. Now I feel like it's also important. We do the we too movement. Yeah, absolutely. You know, how we come together um, and embrace that we both have the male and female as a part of us is really so, vital. So, yes. Cause men are wounded as well because they're, the wounded goddess is wounded as well. And a lot of women, especially when they, they want to be successful, feel that they have to do it in male energy. So what's really special about you is you do it in female energy as well. So you've transcended, you found that balance within yourself and you gift that to your listeners and all those you touch. So that's how, one way you empower other people. So it's, it's really kind of special. Well, thank you, Jen. I'm, I'm so thrilled too that, that you're doing these joint projects with mm -hmm. your soulmate, you know, that it feels like that is such an exciting thing for you to really tap into something you're passionate about with someone you're passionate about. Well, the Jennifer Jammies, we do this podcast together, the videos on my YouTube page, Genuine Healing with a J. We do the um, Jennifer Jammies, which are, I can't believe how, how well they're received people just think that we're so funny together because he's so serious in business and I just he can't keep my attention on the subject and it's just really entertaining apparently so you've had a lot of success with that again tell people what your youtube channel is so they can tune in sure it's genuine healing with a j uh -huh. genuine healing with a j Love and um, there's also um uh, a lot of private sessions, people have actually allowed me to put their private sessions, their most intimate sessions up on YouTube. So anyone who who's not ready to have a session with me um, can look at what other people have done and follow along with the tasks and get relief as well. So so those are the those are still out there and they provide healing for other people. Well and I know your um your tapping you have mm -hmm. some wonderful protocols that are available on your website yeah those are free as well those are there's four different protocols that are free to anyone who just goes to my website and um it's what it is, is it's called the sft protocol and the first one that people should get used to using is the energetic cleanse so if you can think of any person place thing group experience that has caused you to lament over it just put that person's name or subject in the in the like 40 I don't know how many taps are like 40 I should count them and then do all those taps three on the one three three times on the head once on the chest and once on the abdomen and then do that with every single tap and um and so that will release all that frustrated energy that you can't can't get out any other way and it it runs really deep these protocols took years of research with with the adepts they they worked me through these even when i was on the property for that year they were talking to me and like explaining things to me and it was really beneficial it was beneficial for the work i do now yeah well and it's amazing how many clients you've worked with I mean, mm -hmm. it feels like you have just been, people have just been guided to you and you've been, Absolutely. yeah, and, and really guided to do this work. And it is amazingly healing. And it's, what's so interesting is that, that, you know, I think sometimes people hear this stuff and they go, oh, this is out of my realm mm -hmm. of understanding. And so it sounds kind of woo woo. And yet there's a really practical, like you're saying, I mean, there's research around just tapping on these meridians and then the way in which you do it, which is such a beautiful, intuitive and beyond way of, of tapping in for people that I think, yeah, it becomes just a really healing process for people. I mean, think about the placebo effect. You know, everybody knows that the placebo effect, you know, people get healed in that way. What if this is a way to tap into that placebo effect and utilize it? You know, but not enough is said about that. And there's nothing, this is my personal belief, that there's nothing that the human heart guided by the mind can't do with a pure intention. I mean, everyone can be um, 
make social changes on every level like Gandhi did. Imagine if everyone was tapping into their inner Gandhi. And that's what kind of the tapping is. Tap into your empowerment. It's there. You weren't meant to like just like watch TV and uh, which is fine, but that's not all there is to life. You're so multifaceted, everybody. It's incredible. Yeah, what, what a beautiful message, Jen. I think that that's really important. I think all of us are here to do so much more. And it's, you know, we have to clear the conduit so we can become clear conduits. And so, yeah, past trauma and wounding, we know, you know, emotions are stored in the body, you know? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. And I, and I know a lot of my clients, I've had clients go through the, the experience of enlightenment just from doing the tasks and having a, some sessions. One woman, she kept swearing all the time. And in her session, all I was doing is telling her to stop swearing because it's like, that was her breaks to it. And she did the tasks and she came back a year later and she went through the process of enlightenment. And um, a lot of people are gaining their own, they go on to be dynamic healers. And that's why I have the workshops because a lot of people, a lot of EFT facilitators want to become SFT facilitators now. So the workshops help them stay um, ethical enough because it, um, what we're taught as healers is limited even. There's, there's an it factor to that. So even in like business and stuff where you think, when I started doing the business, they wanted me to like hold back and like just give them out little samples because you want them to come to, to you. The adepts, my spirit guide said, no way. That's male energy. You give everything you have all the time and we'll give you more. And that seems to be a guiding principle and it's more and more. So, so when I see someone like you, this beautiful goddess, and, and I think of all my clients this way, is that in, in the spirit of sisterhood, I will give you anything I have. I download all my information into as many people as I can to uplift humanity. So it doesn't die with one person. It's not one lifetime thing. It's exponential. Well, and I can really speak to this, Jen, and I really want to, you know, um, share this with our audience because after we, we tried to do a first interview mm. and we, we had a lot of um, interesting uh, interruptions and some of it was technology and, and some other things. And you were so gracious. You gifted me one of your healing sessions mm -hmm. and it was really powerful. And okay. yeah, I, I just feel like a lot. Um, I, I could definitely feel a lot of energy moving and some, some deep things just kind of being let go. You want to know a really scary thing for me? This is really scary to me. I don't even remember that you did one. Really? I, I Now that you say it, I can remember, but because it's so personal for people that I open up to their, their issues and then it's so private and sacred that I shut back down and it's like that never happened. So I didn't even... I, I didn't even remember. That's really scary because that wasn't very long ago. But if people are worried about like their, their personal issues being out there, I won't even remember who they are unless they keep coming back and stuff. But if they do a second session, it's, it's really surreal because the um, memory brings will open up. Like if I, they do a second session, like if I did another session with you, I would remember what we did then. But, uh -huh. but and it's so really surreal. So it's, it's beyond the human scope. And that's why, you know, I don't remember stuff. Well, I don't even know that that's scary. I think actually that's probably great. I mean, I, in, in some ways, because I know, you know, as a psychotherapist and, you know, transformation coach, definitely confidentiality is key, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so it sounds like your system already has a way that you just automatically do that and shut that down. Some people laugh at me when they come back for sessions because they hear me say over and over, have you ever had a session with me before? And they'll say, yes, we had four of them. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then it's so weird. The files do come back when we're in that session. Oh, sure. It's so personal. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been other 
groups out there that, that have taken notes on their clients, you know, and used them against them. So that's not possible with what I do. It's just not. Yeah. Well, what, you know, what a gift that, that you share all this and regardless of if you remember it or not, that you keep doing it and keep sharing these things and so many free offerings with others. Yeah, I mean, what a, what a gift. Because, um, lots of times I used to do everyone like who needed it for free and it would cripple me and stuff. So then, and then I had people come to me and they would feign being poor, you know, like I had this, and though I, I don't want to put people in that position where they're like, gonna like, um, mock up being poor just to get more sessions out of me. So they have their free help. They have it all out there. And so I can protect myself by getting a fair energy exchange and they can get all their needs met until they are ready to have a private session. Well, yeah. And I think this is your livelihood. So it is, it's an energy exchange. Money yes. is energy. And I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, so Jen, again, how can people get a hold of you? How can they schedule a session with you? It's all right on the website on that one page. The um, There's the genuinehealing.com website. And um, there's one purchase page and you can sign up for the free um, he world healing. You can get a private session there. You can sign up for a workshop and you can even buy the second edition of the SFT lesson on, on that one page. So it's, yeah. Well, and hold that book up again, Jen, really quickly. Oh, this so one? people can see it. You mean yeah, this one? that one, that one, the SFT <laughs> yeah. lexicon. It's so cute because Marvin's so proud of it too. It's like our child and stuff because this information wouldn't have been so, so it's like a, it's like one of the um, textbooks when I went to um, um, massage therapy school or something. It's that solid and it's a lot of information in there. We're getting a lot of good feedback on it. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. And, and what else? Oh, and the, then the YouTube page is really good. If people think this is too foo-foo, they can start out with Jen and her jammies because they can get their feet wet because just watching Marvin's face when I tell him stuff, it's just hysterical. When I, first time I told him, I talked to the onion on my counter because the onion wanted to be used because all life speaks when you love. Love is the conduit and all life will speak to you. So he just tries to like take it in and he knows not to question it because he knows the healing I've done for him and for others. So he, it's just, his face is priceless. It's so funny. Well, so fun. So, so recommending to folks tune in to Jen and her jammies on YouTube to get your feet wet, get an idea of what all of this different modality of healing is all about so people can really be educated and see if this is a fit. Yeah, I think it's a fit for everybody. The adepts say in a couple of years, it's going to be like tapping is going to be like yoga was, you know, it was fringe for a while. Now it's commonplace. And in a couple, couple generations, when everyone is tapping, they won't need to anymore. They will condition themselves to be empowered. And they will just know that how to shift their own energy in their brain and their heart into empowerment. It's yeah. really an opportunity for humanity. So if anyone's worried about what's going on in the world, you can do your part just by doing some tapping. Well, and that's, that is so beautiful. Cause that's my message too. Like, you know, your healing matters. Each one of us are Absolutely. healing matters. And it's so unique. I mean, there's no two snowflakes are like, and no two healers are like, so everyone's a healer in their own right. Like a smile changes the brain chemistry, right? So if you're smiling at people, you're a healer. So we have to get back to the fundamentals that everyone's a healer and you matter, right? Yeah. Thank you, Jen. And thank you so much for spending this time with us. I just appreciate you sharing your wisdom, your healing, and um, your incredible story. Thank you. Thank you as well. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in to The Spark with Stephanie James. Remember that you already have what you need to live a life that is fully lit and fully alive. You're already holding the flame. Now it's time to ignite your best life. 
Learn more at stephaniejames.world. That's stephaniejames.world. And tune in next week at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Shine on!